got me and my sister sent us off to um, Taekwondo. But I think it was probably to stop us all fighting each other at home. It was like an official way we could go and have a, a punch up with each other. <laughs> but um, I really loved it. I really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, when I started my music, I stopped doing combat sports because I, I was a bit, my mom was concerned that I might injure myself or stuff like that. And I just couldn't do everything. I was doing loads of things at school. So I stopped it then, but when I got to the end of my, my um, undergraduate in Glasgow at the Royal Conservatory of Scotland, I wanted to get fit again. And the normal, like going to a normal gym is not exactly my favorite thing to do. <laughs> so I went to look for um, some sort of combat sports and I got into Thai boxing and I was doing some Thai boxing at the Grip House. And then when I moved to London, I went to gym box to continue doing Thai boxing. And I met my coach, Noel Callan and uh, Derek Sweet D Williams. And they both introduced me into boxing and uh, fell in love with it absolutely fell in love with it and um yeah just i started doing some white collar boxing to raise money for charity um wow. it was really kind of uh, it was a it happened at the right time for me boxing because i was going through a really difficult time my mom had been diagnosed with cancer and she unfortunately passed away really quickly after that oh, and wow. um, Sorry, boxing really Sorry, helped that. to get through that yeah no it's okay um but that's what boxing was so important to me it helped me to get through that i had a the boxing family to support me and um yeah no it was uh it was just the right the right time for it and yeah i kind of really fell in love with it and wanted to take yeah. it further so i went professional okay yeah and uh, so you know like yeah you've, you've done taekwondo and all that's what you special that's special like a lot of kicking and you've done thai boxing and you've done white kind of boxing do you have any amateur fights no Oh, you didn't have any amateur fight. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. So you went straight into the pro game, but we obviously mm. did your white collar. Yeah. I mean, so, so did, how many white collar? I mean, correct. How many white collar fights did you have? Did you have many or five or six? No, oh. I was prepared for lots, but a lot of them fell through. So uh, about five or six uh, white collar fights. I won all of them. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think I, oh, I drew one. Yeah, I just just did it. I drew one. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no. I, my coach, Noel, he said, you know, if you want to go further, how about joining an amateur club? And I was like, okay, tell me a bit more about it, all this sort of stuff. And then at the end of it, I was like, well, do I get to stay with you and Derek? Because I was training, Derek was, uh, managed me when I first started my career. And I was like, do I get to stay with you guys to train? And they were like, no, we, we don't, we're not at, at an amateur club. And I was like, I didn't want to tra change my trainer and my, and, and having Derek there. So I was like, no, I, I don't want to do that. And uh, they said, okay, well, we'll go and spar some of the pros and see how you get on. And I went and did some sparring with Kelly Morgan, who was a WBC silver middleweight at the time, and um, did some sparring with Michaela Lauren as well. So, yeah, it was a really eye-opening experience. It was tough sparring. Um, I, I remember thinking I couldn't wait to get back in there and just get better at it. So Wow. Wow. Gee. So... Sorry, Arthur, was you going to say something? Because I, was, nah. I can't see you on my screen. I'm probably going to cut over your questions. Oh no, it's all right. You carry on. Well, but I don't know why you can't. I don't know why you can't see me, Lake. It must be something on your I'll side. Up, I just don't want to see you. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see you both. No, nice and lovely and clear. That's because I've, I've pinned Hannah onto the screen, so hopefully people oh. see our ugly mugs. Do you know what I mean? Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, um, okay. They probably still will because we still yeah, have. Yeah. Quite Anna, so you can, can you see me? Can you see I can see you both, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that, I've not been But um, yeah, it was, you know, obviously that sounds like it was quite, a, you know, from from going from the white collar straight into the professional game, you know, because yeah. a lot of people we talk to, you know, some of them, I mean, we were chatting to a, a guy last night, uh, Amar, was his name Amar? Amar? I hope I'm getting his name right, Amar. 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 He, very similar to yourself, but he had, he still had like 35 amateur fights before he kind mm. of, made that transition across to the professional mm. ranks and um you know even he was saying that was quite a, quite a rude awakening you know because you're kind of it's a completely different different kind of sport isn't it even though it's boxing it's very different from especially yeah. from white collar so how did you find that you know your first fight and stuff how did you feel getting in the ring was it very nerve-wracking or did you just think you know what i've been waiting to do this i'm going to crack on so basically, I think the, the reason I've got to where I am now as a professional is because I've been all around the world and sparred all different girls from everywhere. And yes. I chose to like use my own funds and like finances and savings and stuff to take myself to gyms with my coach and actually train mm -hmm. with some of the top level females out there. Yeah. And you, you can only learn by doing that. I think it's important. Yeah. 
put yourself in difficult situations like that. And I think that's how I had such a steep learning curve. Um, and when I actually got to my first professional fight, I had so many like fall, so many fights fall through, like three or four fights before I actually got to do my debut. That by the time it came around, I was so happy that it was going to happen that um, there was nothing stressing me out about it. I was just like, I'm ready to get in there and I'm ready to go because I've been training for so long for this. So, so Anna. Yeah. Did you not get any kind of bad nerve? Because you'd never had any professional fight before and like coming into it and thinking, oh, this is my first pre professional fight. Do you kind of feel any kind of nerves, you know, going yeah, into your I first I felt, I felt the good nerves. Like there's always, I think as a professional musician as well, like I know yeah. what it like, so it's like to feel nervous um, <laughs> before you walk out on stage. Like yeah. I used to suffer a lot from performance anxiety. Um, boxing massively helped me with that. Um, so... Okay. Yeah, when I started white collar boxing, it really helped me deal with my performance anxiety for playing solo as a musician. Yeah. Um, and so like, when I went out for my my debut fight, I was obviously nervous because it was first time without yeah. head guards. Um, and it was the first time where, you know, I was about to start my professional journey. So I was nervous yeah. about that, but yeah. I was kind of had that overriding riding feeling of, thank goodness, it's finally happening. <laughs> well, you know, fair play to you. And because, you know, with, with myself, I had a lot of amateur fights, so it, that, it helped, you know what I mean? To not have any, and to go professional, I would have thought it was quite quite nerve wracking. But then again, you, you said you'd done Thai boxing, so I suppose doing Thai boxing would help as well. Going professional, maybe get a hit. Yeah. In that game, you know, maybe that, like that helps. Like so. getting kicked in the head, that's got to be a. <laughs> I'm sure kicked in the head's got to hurt. I don't know. I've never been kicked in the head. Yeah. That's a pain. <laughs> <thing. It's probably laughs> you know? Someone kicking you in the. But um, I mean, obviously, and again, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm having a look through your record while we're chatting. I had a look earlier, but it, you know, it's impressive stuff. You know, impressive reading. I mean, like I say, very quickly you progressed. Um, you know, to fight like you're saying, it was very nerve wracking that first fight and you know, following white collar, but, you know, it wasn't long before you were up fighting for titles, you know, like world yeah. titles. I mean, that's, that's, that's mental. So, I mean, it's how mental. did that, yeah, it, it mental in as much, you know, to not have that amateur bat is brilliant. It's mm -hmm. brilliant. If, you know, I don't mean it's mental, is it? Oh my God. I mean, it's, oh my yeah, God, is it, that's crazy that you yeah. started, you know, within a few mm -hmm. fights, you were already kind of stepping up and like you said, yeah. traveling around the world and it was obviously mm. you're very confident um now you know with with you know confident in your abilities i mean so i mean and then you're, you're stepping in the ring with the likes of clarissa shields yeah i mean well, I, th I think that in the women's game things do move a little bit quicker i kind of liken it a little bit more to the ufc because they they have fighters who are fighting for um, you know they're fighting regularly um, at the top level the best fight the best and um, you know that's quite commonplace and if you lose and it's a great fight then you're back in there and you're having another one um, and it, it's all about actually what what happens with the fight if the fight is a great fight for people to watch then you know it doesn't change the fact whereas I think here in boxing when I first started your record meant everything um, yeah. Whereas I think that's really changed in COVID because people are now being put into fights which are like genuine 50-50 fights and because we can't have all of the small hall shows oh. happening. We can't have all of these things that, you know, it has to be exciting fights because there's only eight slots maximum on the card. So yeah. People want to see the exciting fights and I think it's actually really helped boxing because... It has fair fights, no crowds. Absolutely. It's much more exciting, and also people. Not home crowd. They, yeah, they they see they know both of the opponents as well. So like, but they know it's both sides. It's not just um, the prospect against somebody who we don't know that well. Yeah. So it means more people are getting into the sport and watching it, mm. and I think that's yeah. been really good. But w when I started, it was more people were worried about their records and things like that. Um, I, I didn't come into the sport to finish something and you know. I came into it to see how far I could go coming yeah. into it late and putting my mind to it and really working hard. And, you know, that, you know, the proof is in that I've done lots of great things and I don't regret any of it. No, well, definitely. Yeah. definitely. I mean, so, I mean, that, I mean, obviously stepping into the, the ring, I mean, cause I'm thinking Clarissa Shields going back to that one. Sorry, taking yeah. it. It's like, um, you know, there's you with, with limited kind of, I know you're saying you went in there to see what you could do. I mean, that's that's a hell of a test, you know, for, you know, you're sitting there going, yeah, I wanted to see how far I could go. It's great mm -hmm. that you weren't worried about protecting O's and that, because to be honest with you, I think, you know, 
it winds a lot, you know, like you say with the UFC, that seems to be a people in the UFC, they don't seem to care about this whole my, mystical oh, it's about just like you just know. said in there, yeah, just taking on the best, best person wins, end of which I think is boxing needs to adopt that kind of that kind of De- approach a little bit, definitely. People are obsessed with that, you know, yeah, record it doesn't teach anyone anything, definitely. But, um, you know, getting in there, I mean, how was that as an experience then for your fighting, Clarissa? I mean, like I said, huge amateur background, Olympian, and then you've come along, you've got in there, you know, and how was how was that whole experience? That must have been amazing for you. I think if you added all of Clarissa Shields' uh, amateur experience up with her mm. professional fights, I think it came to around about 160 to 170 fights. Mm. Um, mm. That I was going in there with uh, maybe... 12, 10 or 12 fights experience yeah. in general, yeah. including yeah. my white collar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, but for me, like, you know, it, it kind of all played in at the right time. Um, she, I, I've been training with Christina Hamer, who she was meant to be fighting. Yes. And, um, yeah, so I was one of her main sparring partners. I've been over in Germany a lot, been working with her loads. And um, nobody else really wanted to fight close at the time. Everybody was kind of like avoiding the fight. And I got asked if I wanted to do it. And I said, well, I want to see how, you know, where I am, what level I'm at. And I, you know, I'm going to go in there and give it everything I've got. And, you know, for me, it was a fantastic experience. The first sort of like, I was on a matchroom card over in America. I was on DAZN and, you know, it's a whole new experience. You've got to do the build up to the fights as uh, filming, that you're going to be in front of the cameras that are beamed all around the world. You've got to do the press conferences. You've got to be able to stand up there and speak. Then you've got yeah. the weigh-ins. Um, so it's a whole experience and it was fantastic and I really enjoyed it. And I learned a lot from it. It just meant that every time I get ready for a fight um, at a high level, I know that I've been in there and I've experienced that. And, you know, at the time, me and Chris didn't like each other. <laughs> so, you yeah, know, it certainly. made for a really good sort of build up and um, mm-hmm. yeah, and a great fight as well. It was an awesome fight, absolutely awesome Absolutely fight. brilliant, absolutely brilliant. brilliant fight. So you and Clarissa, you good mates now, you're okay, you're all good together, yeah? Do you know what, right? So the lead up to that, we really didn't like each other. There wasn't anything we thought we had in common. Like mm. we just thought we were chalk and cheese. And um, yeah, no, it was it was just one of those things. And afterwards, we're still going at it after the bell. Uh, when the fight finishes and we're in anti-doping, we're still not kind of really getting on at it. And um, But then afterwards, once we calmed down a bit in antidoping, we were chatting to each other and she was saying what she thought I was good at. And, you know, she's like, oh, you know, what this, this and this. And, you know, it was a great fight and all that sort of stuff. And actually I got signed by her, her manager, Mark Taffet, after right. that fight in America and assigned to Salita Promotions okay. and um, her also her uh, promoter. Yeah. And since then, we've been, been really good, solid sparring partners. We're really good friends. And actually we found out we have very similar outlook to what we're trying to achieve with women's boxing and also yeah. like our attitude towards training and focus and things. So actually we get, we're actually very similar. We just didn't know it. Didn't know it at the time. But <laughs> yeah. You hear that in boxing a lot, don't you? You have these rivalries in boxing, you know, yeah. and then, you know, time goes on and then you become kind of best friends. You see it a lot in boxing. It's, yeah. and I think that's what's wonderful about it. You know, you've been in there, you've been, been knocking lumps out of each other for X, you know, God knows how many rounds, plus the sparring, plus all the other stuff, you know. Yeah. yeah you've got True that. respect yeah. after that. You know, you, when you've respect. gone 10 rounds or whatever it is, you've gone with somebody and then yeah. you get out of it, you give each other a hug and afterwards, maybe when you calm down a little bit, you know, it's, it's just respect each other because you know what each other's gone through to get to that point. Yeah. Where, one or lost it's taken a lot to get there so mm-hmm. that's the, the best thing about boxing I think the respect side of it and also you touched on it earlier with the you know the whole Covid situation stuff and I mean Arv and I talk a lot about the women's fight game and you know at the the ladies are showing up the men yeah oh, you should, sure are and it's yeah. not bothering yeah. you to go yeah. anywhere yeah <laughs> you know, kind of like you all seem to be willing just to get in the ring mm-hmm. you know, to get out you know, and um, and just put everything on the line. Whereas the fellas, it still seems to be at the minute. There's that kind of like, well, you know, we might fight next year. But you know, really yeah, well. you're not bothered about your record, and you're not bothered where to travel. It doesn't bother you. It don't faze you. You know, you don't mind about that. Whereas blogs, they want to stay here and want everybody to come to them in their backyard in yeah. their town, worried yeah. about their records. Ladies, yeah. you ladies, it don't bother you all. I think that's partially because. 
a there's not as many of us and we're aware of that so we're like take the opportunities when they come and b it's kind of that little bit i know every woman out there has it where we just want to show how good we can be and show off a little bit you know because it's only recently that women's sport women's boxing has really started to rise up and if we're getting a platform to show it then we might as well take it with both hands and go for it you know so it's a great opportunity for that you ladies oh, are definitely different. Ladies are definitely different. It's a fact. That no matter what you say, you know, if you were still to go and fight somewhere else, where no matter what, you all would do it, and you don't mind, and you'll all fight whatever. Well, there's been a lot Top, to learn yeah. from the ladies in the fight game recently. You know what I mean, I mean, you're just really showing them up. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's oh, it's true though. It's true. Yeah. It's for, for yeah. women boxing for a long time, you know. And been some great yeah. fights on the matchroom card. I like, mm. uh, like I said, massive props to you know Sky Sports Boxing, Matchroom, and Eddie Hearn for doing it because I think women's boxing is going to be one of the female sports to come out of COVID on a positive. Oh, a definitely. Of, a lot of women's sports are really struggling due to mm. COVID, and I think boxing's fine. Women's boxing has finally been given that little boost, and we're actually you know, kickstarting things and things are going well for us. So, yeah, I know COVID has been terrible, but for women's boxing, I can really see the positives. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, yeah like you say, Eddie, Sky Sports, you know, and they, they've been they've been well but right behind it, haven't they? And really yeah. giving it a push. So, I mean, we'll, we'll move on to, if it's all right, if you're happy to chat about your last fight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, I know on Twitter and stuff, there was a lot, you know, I, I for one, felt that, oh, you know, I did, I thought, you've got this, you've got this in the bag, you're going to do it. So, so, so tell me, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but it was, okay, you know, obviously there was there was delays with the fight taking place because yeah. it Peter, one of the team got COVID? Uh, Peter got, uh, his test came back positive for COVID. So her, yeah. her whole team had to leave the camp, the bubble. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that was really mega disappointing at the time. Mm-hmm. But I mean, as it stood, it meant that I got a chance to stay in the bubble, see how everything worked and, and also support my best mate, Ellie Scottney, in her debut, which was an absolute positive. So, yeah. What, what was it like? What was it like, by the way, in that bubble? What was it like with it? everything going on do you have to have tests what was it like how was it so, you know <laughs> when you get there you, you get your covid test and i'm not gonna lie it's probably one of the most gross tests that i've ever done like they, they put this thing down the back of your throat and then the same thing goes up your nose and it's just minging it's just like it's, it's horrible and it feels like it's like trying to scratch your brains or something it's horrible <laughs> um but yeah the hard part was staying in your room for like you know you're you're in your room for a whole day and night and yeah. i'm I'm not that kind of person that does well just sitting on my own doing nothing, yeah. especially in fight right. week when I'm just like hyped, you know. Um, I must admit, my coach Noel had like maybe a FaceTime him four times. And he was like, "Stop FaceTiming me! I will tell you we can leave the room." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, but I'm so bored." <laughs> Did, you Netflix? Did you watch lots of Netflix? Oh, I did watch Netflix. I watched days okay. on TV. Right. I've never done that. So. <laughs> Hammered it all every yeah. season on Netflix. Uh, yeah. So a good it was a good, good obviously boring being stuck in your room but how was it being around all the other fighters I mean because it must be quite kind of intense you know because I quite like it actually I quite yeah. like the sort of the vibe um it's kind of like everybody's in the same sort of bubble the build-ups all happening and like people opposite teams are sitting at different tables at breakfast and you're in different areas and stuff like that and you're training at different times because they set up a a ring and then there's an area for you to do bag work and stuff like that as well and then there's a cardio section as well so that's all set up for you by matchroom Um, and then of course there's it's very organized you've got like the media day and then you've got the press conference and then you've got the weigh-in day so you're actually quite busy the whole week. There's a lot of things that you need to do. So you're not actually sitting around waiting for time to pass. Like normally on fight week, you're spending a lot of time at home or like sharpening up with your coach in the gym. But there's a lot of time. Whereas yeah. in, in, in the bubble, you're actually you've got things that you need to do. Um, so and they also set up um, interviews with various uh, media outlets and stuff like that. So yeah, see, we don't yeah. get into that. You see, we're not doing that. <laughs> yeah. we're you know, yeah. when you was in um, that bu- bubble, did you actually come across Savannah? Did you actually see her around while you was in that bubble, did you? The first one or the second one? The first fight. So the first, the first fight, fight, the first one in Peterborough, yeah. um, I arrived just before they arrived. And they arrived, right, they were waiting to get their COVID test just after yeah. us. So yeah. literally, we passed each other. Mm-hmm. And then 
also in both situations in Peterborough and in um, mm. um, what do you call it uh, the, other one. One. Uh, yeah, the other one <laughs> Wembley um, yeah, they, Wembley they put the fighters room, rooms beside each other yeah so me and Savannah we know we're beside each other in the rooms and our coaches yeah. are beside each other in the rooms yeah. It's just, it's very weird because... Do you yeah, can you say a word to one another? Yeah. Or did you ignore one another? Did you actually ignore we, one another? We mostly ignore one another. Like, yeah. I think yeah. what do, like, just... Carly know. Skelly yeah. said the same thing. We chatted to Carly Skelly because obviously she fought Amy Timlin on Halloween. Yeah, yeah. And she said exactly the same thing. She said it was really yeah. weird. She opened, like, yeah. a hotel room door and then, like, Amy Timlin's coach was dead opposite her, you know, opening yeah. the door. Yeah. Oh, funny like, feeling. It's just so weird to know <laughs> that you is next completely door. odd. I, I just wouldn't yeah. like you can hit like in Peterborough. Like when Savannah was there, I could kind of hear her next door, um, and it was just weird because you're like, I don't know, could say hi through the wall or something, but it's He's just a bit odd. Door, they come over there. There's a joining. Could have wound her up and been banging on the door. Yeah, dear. yeah I know. <laughs> I just thought that was strange. But everything else, like you just kind of bypass it. You're with your team, so yeah. once you all let out the bubble, you kind of moving in groups like whilst you're there so you don't tend to wander around on your own anyway I would never do that regardless wherever I'm fighting I'm always with my coach or my, my cut man yeah. or something like that okay. but um, you, you, yeah you just, you're in the same place and it kind of adds the sort of the simmering excitement of it all really yeah uh, yeah it must be yeah, it must, yeah, it must, yeah you must yeah I mean and even what about breakfast and stuff? Do you do? I mean, you don't bump into. You know, <laughs> I'm just. I know it's random. I'm just thinking it must be really hard because you do. You know, you're you're really in the same place for breakfast, so yeah. you all see each so, other all the time. So, such a weird thing. I just can't imagine it. You know, I can't imagine how it would be. You know, such a weird thing. I should know? imagine like normal circumstances. You're kind of. You know, if that. If 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 it was a non-COVID, if we can imagine a non-COVID world, you now, wouldn't see one another. No, that, not that, until uh, the weigh-in. No. Yeah. And it's just really, I mean, uh, granted, obviously, you, you're you very disciplined, you guys, and you didn't, you know, start shouting at each other. But, you know, I think of the likes of Dillian White, you know, and some of the <laughs> more hot-headed fighters. It must be I'm really worried that they're going to start knocking the crap out of each other in the middle. Well, I think also, and, like, it's not that different in some regards. Like, I mean, for small hall shows, it is different. Like you would never, that would never happen. You wouldn't come into contact with each other apart from no. like potentially the way you come, in, that's mm. literally it. But uh, having fought in America quite a lot and when I fought Clarissa, we were obviously all in the same hotel in the build up to the fight at the end of the week. Same thing for um, when I fought Alicia Napoleon in New York. I was, yeah. all the away fighters were in the same hotel. So and then we saw each other at the weigh-in, but you know, we were, had a place and I organized somewhere for myself to train and so a bit more flexibility I can move around whereas yeah sometimes you are just in the the one place and that's it yeah uh, wow. tip my hat to you for, it, like yeah. I say new experience another experience isn't it yeah, to of course. Up, you know so I mean moving on to the fight I mean how did um I mean how was it fighting with no crowd as well? I mean, I like to ask all of you fighters, you know, because it, it must be, especially for yourself, because obviously you didn't have that big amateur career. I, mean, I know yeah. you did the white or no amateur career. So a lot of fighters are probably kind of quite used to not, especially those that have had amateur careers, they're, they're probably quite used to fighting in front of smaller audience, you know? I mean, yeah. for you, how was it for you that? I mean, that must have been really strange. It didn't make any difference to me, really, because actually once you're in there, you're so focused on what you're doing, it doesn't really matter. Um, mm -hmm. But also, I think my experience with as a musician, like I've played in massive concert halls to huge audiences. And then I've also played to like my mum in, in like when I was younger, you know, like I've played yeah. to literally like one or two people in a tiny room uh, for mm -hmm. exams. You know, it's for me, it made it really didn't make any sort of impact on me. Um, mm -hmm. Because I was so focused on what I had to do, so like you know, blinkers on on the on the job in hand, it didn't really make much of a difference. And so now mm -hmm. I think it might have made more of a difference had I been in Scotland, because like yeah. obviously there would have been a home crowd, and you can just get a little buzz from that. But yeah. um, most of the time, it was actually it was fine. You can hear the corners really clearly, both corners right. as the fighter. So uh, that was weird because it's kind, of, but it's kind of like being inspiring. You know, you mm -hmm. can hear in when you're inspiring and you can hear two corners talking about and ch shouting things yeah. so actually it really wasn't that different and I think most fighters would actually find it fine apart from the ones that really rely on the buzz from the crowd like yeah because yeah. there, there is a lot of them what do do that there, a lot of uh, fighters 
you know, a ticket sellers and they rely on crowds. So, you know, I would have thought it would have felt a bit odd for them. Yeah. But as, as yourself, you seem to be a person, you can travel anywhere and it don't bother you. Oh, you go to no. America and it doesn't bother yeah. you. Does it like, well, I really love fighting in America. It's actually one of my favourite places to fight, to be honest, because... I, I, I mean, I know, most people would be great. nervous, you know, <laughs> to, to do what you do and go out to America and fight, it, would, it really would bother them. But you going out of the country, it doesn't bother you. See, most people, it would. I mean, you know um, what? My most stressful fight was the one where I fought for my world title at home in Scotland. That was the okay. one I was the most nervous for because okay. I was out in front of my family, my friends, my home country, and it was I was headlining a show on the BBC. The BBC hadn't shown boxing for ages. I was, yeah. making, I was about to try and make history for my country, which is forever yeah. in history books now. I was yeah. so nervous. Yeah, um, I can imagine. I proper like I think it, yeah it was the one that really kind of got to me the most and the what mm -hmm. the one thing that triggered it the worst was I was walking to the ring and all the little fighters from the Kinnock boxing gym kind of made me sort of like a guard of honor on the way out mm -hmm. to my walkout and that got me you know all these kids standing there as lined up as I was about to walk out and that really got me just <laughs> right here <laughs> and I just you know I was like oh my god but um yeah I think when you go abroad and, and you know you're going uh, as the away fighter, I kind of mm -hmm. feel like you've got nothing to lose, and you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. You don't feel as much pressure as the person who's standing in there as the home fighter. <laughs> so for me, that it doesn't make any difference. Oh, brilliant! <laughs> yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Crazy though, isn't it? I mean, just to, I'm like it's you said, that, yeah, the, the pressure you must have felt being mm -hmm. fighting in Scotland for a world title. Yeah, I, can, <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine. <laughs> <was one>. Live, <laughs> but yeah, on BBC as well. Crazy. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. So I mean, um, so. Going back to the fight itself, you know, how what what happened? What what? How did you? You know, so I felt really good at the beginning. So the first two rounds, I thought I won those. Um, I I think in the lead up to the fight, you know, I talked about going to war the whole whole lead up to the fight, and actually yeah. I went out and boxed for the first two rounds, and I think that kind of caught Savannah off guard. She said that in an interview. She wasn't expecting me to do that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then the third round, she came out and tried to put more physicality behind it. Um, some people had me winning it, some people didn't, um, but I actually, I, I bust my eardrum in the third at the end. Wow. Um, yeah, so it kind of really affected my balance and it's why when I, when I watch it, I'm like, I see one fighter in the first three rounds and the next three rounds is somebody else, you know, like, because yeah. I wasn't doing things as like that I'd planned. So my, game wasn't my game wasn't my game plan. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, Perforated. yeah, it was, it was just... Uh, there's nothing I could do and the other thing is as well she was just too big for me on the night and you know there's a massive difference and something I've learned from the fight is I'm definitely not a middleweight and uh, you know next year I'm stepping down to 147 I'm really excited mm -hmm. about it brilliant, um, brilliant. but yeah you know you could the size difference is this and was I was really obvious, happy yeah. at the beginning and just I couldn't manage to take out my game plan after that and it is what it is. It's boxing. These things happen, and yeah. no excuses. She boxed brilliantly on the night, and yeah. it was a fantastic performance yeah. from Savannah. And she should be really proud. And I'm really excited to see where she's going to go next. Yeah. Um, so That's yeah, nice. no, it was great. Yeah, no, no. And you did, like I say, I mean, having a perfect. I mean, I've had a perfect, not in a box. Yeah, you balance it takes your balance off here and balance, everything. You just can't everything goes, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, you think you're doing really stuff, but you're not. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, moving, like but apparently I was not moving my head like I thought I was moving my head <laughs> so yeah. yeah well I mean and like so for the future for you then you're looking at welterweight yeah big yeah, fight yeah. at welterweight we spoke to Rick Ramos from Chicago oh yeah literally two Jenny and a half trainer yes and he's do, do, you, do you know him do you know him um, I know him um virtually on uh like online I follow him okay Oh, okay, what well, a lo lovely guy, by the way. Really nice yeah, guy, no, wouldn't he? Like it? Oh, he's he brilliant. sounds like he's a good guy, and I love, yeah. I love what he's done with, um, for JD Mac. I'm really pleased mm. for them. You know, as as a you know as a team, they've done really, really well. And yeah. it's nice to see that in boxing, things happen and things change. So we'll see what happens after the Cecilia Brackhouse rematch. Um, I, I think that's, that's coming up thing. for her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, but you know, it's nice to see these sort of dream moments happen to people in mm -hmm. boxing. And yeah. uh, it was nice that JD Mack, she's unified welterweight champion of the world. That's insane. You know, that's yeah. so exciting. <laughs> she yeah. had a really, I mean, talking to Rick about her, you know, she had a really tough 
upbringing as well. She had like, periods mm. of homelessness, yeah. you know, really tough life. So to see her, like you just said there, to see her go on yeah. and become the undisputed welterweight champion. I know there's talk of, I mean, when we were talking to Ricky, he was very much um, talking about obviously the rematch with Brown House and then he's saying that um, we'd like to get her in back with Katie Taylor maybe or something, yeah. you know. But I don't know if Katie were lightweight to welterweight, don't know how that would mix. But But for you, that would be logical. So, you know, to come down and like you say that you could see looking at the um the fight with savant you could see the size difference between you guys mm. yeah. yeah and i think there's some really exciting fights for her now obviously the clarissa shields one's the big one that everyone's talking about um yeah. but there are some you know girls on that weight which would be really exciting for her and even if, even at super middle there's ellen sederos and there's franchon cruz and obviously clarissa down at middleweight for the unified so there's quite a lot of exciting people but you know yeah for me I won my world title at 154. Mm. I belong at th that weight or below. And mm, next yeah. year we're going to hit 147. And um, yeah. I'm really excited about it because I'm, oh, I'm big for 147. <laughs> so I'm pleased yeah. to hear. You know, I was worried yeah. about, you know, I, you know, when, you know, I, I was hoping when we spoke to you basically, you were going to say you were going to continue with your career because you just don't know until you, you know, it's always oh, that. Sorry. Absolutely, no doubts. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. That's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah that's really pleasing to hear. Oh, thank you. Guys. They've got so much to offer the sport, you know. Yeah. And um, you know, just to see you in more fights. I know we're all fans, mm. so we'd be buzzing to to know that you're carrying on. So that's mm. that's a relief. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, in regards to, I mean, are you? I mean, it's great that you're carrying on. Have you got anything else lined up? You know, the music side of stuff. Mm. You, you know, so the, the really, the, the really stuff? sad thing about COVID has meant that, like, I've really not done any performing since February last year. Oh, like, okay. it's it's really sad because I had loads of concerts lined up because Easter's a big time for musicians. We do a lot of a lot of different concerts, mm. a lot of religious ones, especially with Easter being there. Um, yeah. And I had like five concerts in the diary that all got cancelled in the space of two days. Um, and then we went into lockdown yeah. and um, it's just sad because I, I'm missing the buzz of performing. Like that's why, um, you know, for me, this, the connection with boxing and music is all performing and I'm missing that sort of buzz um, with my music. My quintet, we do a lot of, um, we work with a company called Live Music Now that goes into primary schools and also goes into care homes and we do interactive oh, brilliant. concerts. Brilliant. And obviously we've not been able to do that, especially with the care mm. home situation. Yeah. Um, and I'm kind of missing the rewarding side of that and seeing people's reactions to music and things. But we did manage to get um, an interactive sort of concert done online using a, an app called Acapella, mm. where you right. record your parts and then it syncs them all together. So um, we did some work for that that was then played in a primary school for kids that um, who are suffering with special needs and things like that. And yeah. also for their parents at home so they could listen and do it with their kids at home, which is oh, quite wow. good. Um, oh, but it's not, not very nice, though, is it? Not knowing with the music side when you're going to be able to go back and perform and do that thing. It's very sort of hard, isn't it? you know, not yeah. knowing when you're going to be able to do that, you know. I no, mean, I know. That is, you know. That's the sad thing, because, like, I love that. And music's my first love and it's the one thing yeah. that will, I will always have um, no matter what age I am even when I retire yeah. from boxing I will still have music, um, music. and but I've, I have been very lucky my students have all been fantastic throughout this period and they've definitely all improved my technology skills because they've all been telling teaching me loads of things like oh miss you've got you can do this with you share your screen with me on Skype and this is how you do it and like <laughs> You know, they've been brilliant um, and they've all adapted really well. Like the kids have done really, really well, actually. Um, but I look forward to being able to hear them in person at some point, which would be great. Yeah, you can't beat that real interaction, can you? I mean, this is all great. Uh, and then the yeah. Skype in and, you know, all, the, all these other flipping platforms that are appearing. But mm, no. you can't beat that real one to one kind of interaction. No, you can't. No. no, you can't. You really can't. And yeah. how, I mean, boxing wise, when, you know, I don't even talking about you retiring it just seems ridiculous but are you I mean you've got a lot to offer in music obviously do you ever think you know we're talking about you know training and you know coaching and all. Do you, when I look at boxing there's a lot of obviously it's a very still very male dominated boxing trainer wise do you do you think that maybe that's an area you might move into is training fighters I absolutely love teaching people. Um, I do some PT stuff now, but I also obviously teach all my music side of things as well. I take boxing classes in London at gyms. 
Um, yeah. So for me, like, I think the training side of it is fascinating. I've got so much respect for trainers. Like my trainer goes through hell with me. <laughs> like I know this for a fact, getting yeah. me ready for a fight. And there's a lot of things that people don't see on the outside that a trainer's got to do um you know and they're the kind of person they're the only person that you really want to interact with when you're coming up to a fight um and i would love to do that you know it'd be a fantastic mm. sort of it'd be an interesting journey to take someone um and and do what i did you know and, and maybe take them to yeah. like start with the amateurs or then go through that and it's a yeah. whole world um yeah. i've always said I, I quite like to do uh commentary actually that's uh something that i like to do when when i yeah. do retire um, mm -hmm. We're going to be in Scotland a lot. We're going to be in Scotland a lot, so you can come and do some commentary for our fights. That'd be brilliant. absolutely. I would love to do that. <laughs> so yeah. that'd be great. We're going to be doing a lot of the, covering a lot of the female fights in. Uh, in <laughs> so there you go. You can come do it with that. But oh, no, really? I, that would be good as well because again, it's another thing. You know, the, the women are breaking down these barriers. You know, like we've said, mm. the fight in terms they're showing up. The guys, they definitely are. Oh, it, definitely it, are there. Yeah, yeah, nice to see the female you know especially former female fighters should we call them you know branching off and you know when you look at ringside on sky it's always even though they do a great job like the matt macklins and adam yeah. smith and all yeah. that nice to to actually have some for the for male and female fights to have some yeah there. i think that would be uh, the it, next logical step you know yeah you seem to see a lot in america uh, a lot of lady commentate commentary there but yeah. you don't, really, you don't really see it that much here. Yeah, you can see it in the football. They've got the, the, the female commentary teams in, in the football now. So why not? Yeah, no, football? I think for me, it's something that I find really interesting. And like, I'm a total boxing geek. Like, I'm <laughs> constantly watching like all the old boxing fights from the past. And um, I love to like kind of research a fighter and, and learn about them and then like mm. see them perform on the night. Like, I know my friend Alicia Napoleon, she, she does quite a bit over in America. And yeah. um, when when it was the Clarissa Shields Christina Hamer fight on Box Nation, I did the commentary with uh, Steve Bunce. We we talked about it. Oh, the, did you? Yeah, okay. The pre fight thing. Um, I was up at like midnight for that fight. I was up at the studios, <laughs> but um, it was really exciting, and I enjoyed I enjoyed it. I think it's quite a fun challenge, and yeah. it's I kind of I think the the women's game is quite small. So as a as a female fighter, you should know your own weight class, uh, where, who's at the top of it. You should know the one above yours and the one below yours because women, as women, we go through them so easily. Yeah. So yeah. It, you should know that. And that's kind of like what, you know, what commentary is about is learning who's doing what and who's achieving mm -hmm. things. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. And at the minute before, I know we're, we're taking up a lot of your precious time, but we're, we're kind of making the most of having you in. So I mean, who are your, uh, in, in women's boxing at the moment, who are your favourite? Who, who are you sort of looking at? And obviously you've talked about Savannah, but we've had quite a few fights recently. I mean, obviously Katie Taylor's standout. I've you know. been, been there, a lot, lot of women fights on. We've been for us to uh, look at. Them. So <laughs> my, kind of watching and admiring. So I really enjoyed the Terry Harper and Natasha Jonas fight in the first fight camp. I thought yeah. that was a fantastic fight. Um, and I really think there should be a rematch uh, yeah, on that one. Um, yeah. I think uh, a fighter to watch, um, Cianessa Estrada, a super fly. She's brilliant over in America. She's amazing. Really like her. Um, I think, who else? Oh, Michaela Mayer. Obviously, she's an obvious opponent for Terry Harper coming up. Yeah. I really rate her. I think she's a great fighter. I want to see Clarissa get out this year. That's got to happen. Like, you know, yeah. it's, been, it's just been a nightmare for her, I think, to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think I think people don't realise it, but America's been a lot worse than we have over here. And yeah. if you're not in the top rank bubble <laughs> or yeah. able to be on a matchroom zone card, that's You've got no it. chance of getting a fight higher. That's yeah. your options. Like, literally it. Because, like, you know, not doing any fights. So... You know, it, it's quite hard for them. And also they had the police out, like the police were stopping people actually going into gyms. They were locking them down. Like things were really, really not open at all mm -hmm. in America. So I do feel for her over there. Um, it's a shame. And yeah. And obviously, you know, Hannah Gabriel's over in Costa Rica. She's not been out for a long time. She's a great fighter at the Super Welterweight Division. Yeah. Um, so there's yeah, some really exciting things. And obviously... I'm looking forward to the JD Max Cecilia Brackhouse rematch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Gonna be, yeah. That's definitely going to be good. So, good fight. I think, 
as well. I really want to actually another one. I will say I really want to see um, Katie Taylor versus Chantel Cameron. Yes, yes. because yeah. that, that's a, that's a fight that I think should be happening. Because like, mm -hmm. no offense to Katie Taylor's opponent the other night, but they were just like classes apart. Yeah. Like, they were nowhere near each no, other. Yeah. Should, should you, have been fighting. You know, Anna. You know what it was. The she was very tough. Yeah. She was very tough, but you know, she was that she was outclassed. Yeah. Yeah. I think the fight should be stopped twice. Uh, yeah, it should have points. been. Mm. Have carried on that one. Yeah. That was, just, you know. just, a, just a tough girl, and that was all. Um, she was totally outclassed, and it, you know, it was, you know, it shouldn't have happened, in my opinion, that one. Yeah, I mean, she was yeah. mad three, and that's the problem mm. with the women's game. Yeah. Now, I think we need to build levels in women's boxing, and the next step to do that is either you take world titles to 12 two-minute rounds, yeah. or you yeah. start having three-minute rounds and having 10 threes for a world title, because at the moment, you've got people who are fit to fight for 10 rounds, and it's 10 twos, and you fight 10 twos for like a Commonwealth title, but then you also fight 10 twos for a world title. Yeah. But those should be two completely different levels. Uh, and the other yeah. side of it, well, I mean, Arvin, oh, again, talking about this, sorry, taking up your time, but we're going to pick yeah. the right here, get your thoughts yeah. back, is, yeah. you know, in women's box, I know that we talk about there's there's not as many female fighters as there are male fighters, but they still need to maybe introduce those levels a bit. I mean, um, there's no British title, obviously, no British titles on the line, so you, you're kind of starting out as a female fighter, you're getting chucked straight into, like, Commonwealth European mm. world yeah. title fights. I mean, a prime example was, I mean, I, I know the fight didn't take place between uh, Rachel Ball and Ebony Bridges, yeah. but Ebony Bridges, I think she, she said like four fights, 26 minutes of action, she was going to be fighting for the WBA bantamweight title against Ball. Um, but when you look at it the, realistically, I mean, someone like Rachel Ball, okay, she's not, again, I think she's had like six or seven fights. But yeah. Like yourself, you know, she did a lot of white collar. She did a whole, she was a former world kickboxing champion, you know. Mm -hmm. so exactly. Not, uh, and Anna, you, you can you can you can see the experience, can't you, like here, Anna? You can yeah. see the experience in a, a yeah. former, a fantastic class boxer due to all that kickboxing experience and that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's put, you put her in good stead. Put her in good stead. It should be that traditional route. They should introduce a British title, even like English Definitely. title, British English title. British. Mm -hmm. I understand why we don't have a British title to give the British Boxing Board of Control their, their due on this one. I actually understand it because mm -hmm. the, the best thing about the British title is that you can win it outright. Yeah. yeah. And there's not enough talent, depth of talent in the UK. There almost is around the featherweight, super featherweight division to mm -hmm. like have, like, so you need to what, win it three times before you win it outright. Yeah. And, you know, if it, at my weight, for example, the only other person that I've really got is Stacey Copeland, really, uh, at mm -hmm. Super Welter. Uh, maybe uh, if Kirsty Bavington was to step up. But, like, that's me talking about two people because that is it. <laughs> yeah. And, like, you yeah. know... But you, you know what? A, it's a very uh, expensive belt as well. Uh, like, Anna, bring in that, uh, another you, a kind of title there. Maybe not so much a British title, but maybe they could introduce some, another level somewhere there. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I think they should still have the British... Because, listen, there was... Um, Super flyweight, and I think what well, Charlie Magri, there was nobody to fight for it, so we won it once and he kept it. Exactly. So, yeah, so they should. I know what, you, what you're saying, but no, everybody's entitled to have the opportunities, absolutely. Fight. And I would yeah. love, like, t trust me, if there'd been an opportunity for me to fight for British, I would yeah. absolutely have taken it with both hands because so, that yeah. belt is stunning, it but... is stunning. The problem is, it comes with such great heritage as well. But mm -hmm. the problem is, the cost of a British title belt, like for it to be made, is actually probably more than both the girls are getting paid on the card. Yeah. yeah. It's I not mean, it's like that is absurd. Like, that shouldn't be the excuse, but yeah. that is that to put that into perspective, like you've got to have a big promoter like Matram paying for that belt plus playing the purses of the girls. I'm, I know what you're saying, but you're all, everybody's entitled to an opportunity. It should yeah. be fair just for blogs to win it. You all, yeah. we're all equal, and we're all entitled to an opportunity to fight for that belt. So, so, in my opinion, and I'm sure it will happen at some stage. Yeah, I think it will. Women will be able to fight for it. You know what I mean? Um, I give the next five years is what I'm yeah. thinking. Within yeah. the next five years, that will become an Definitely. opportunity. Definitely. Um, I hope so. Anyway. Really yeah. Be because <laughs> because Anna, the, everything else women can fight for. Yeah, the, 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 the Commonwealth, 
European. The, the European, and they're all identically the same to the when ones that the men fight for. You know, I mean, I always think maybe that they should maybe make it from ten to twelve if they want to keep it at twos, keep it at twos for a while, but make it not ten, make it make, it make it make it twelve. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. That's what I keep saying. Rather, is that rather than ten, we need, yeah. we need that kind of that that division because at the moment we uh, have like the elite level. We have yeah. people at the bottom. There's mm. not a lot in the middle, and, and therefore there's no differentiation between the people who are kind of good enough, who are fit enough to yeah. do ten, and have experience enough to do ten. But yeah. should they really be fighting for a world title? Yeah. I mean, and then Anna, if they want to keep other area titles for for ladies, make them ten. Yeah. If you have area titles, you know wherever you're from, Scottish Scottish titles, English Absolutely. titles. Midland titles, keep them at 10. But anything regarding Commonwealth, European, World, make them 12 well, and yeah. keep them at 2. Yeah. Don't have to necessarily put them to 3. They should no. do it that way. It doesn't seem yeah, like they give well, it much like, there's, there's that argument for t- uh, two-minute rounds to remain. There's the argument for us to move to threes. I personally would love it to be threes. I'm a three-minute round fighter, 100%. Like, mm-hmm. that suits me to a T. Yeah. But I understand. I think... It goes too quick, then it the twos. Oh, my God, it goes so fast. <laughs> but... Um, Two minutes is definitely exciting to watch and it, mm. it, it definitely grabs people's attention because you have a like girl, there isn't a feeling out process for the girls. We're, we're not like, we're not trying to set stuff up and look, check things out in the first round. No, it goes a hundred miles an hour straight away because you've not got that much time. No. Um, and I think it would be nice to have another minute, but I understand mm-hmm. the argument for keeping twos. But if that happens, then we should go up to 12 twos for world title. Yeah, definitely. Just give it Definitely. that extra. Because yeah, ten two minutes, ten rounds goes so quick, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You know, a lot of a lot of you, like you say, you probably train for three minute rounds, you know, in the gym. Anyway. Yeah. So two minutes must just go in the blink yeah. of an eye. It must be quite fast. Absolutely training. does. <laughs> You're like, oh what, it's round five already. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It just seems yeah. a bit unfair. So like you said, even if they do 12 twos, I know there's a lot of chat about um there's medical, is it medical reasons or something for the two well, Actually, I have something really interesting to say about that. Like, mm. there's a lot of fighters. Like, so people who fought Clarissa Shields, for example, um, mm. like, I don't know, um, Femke Herms, for example, that but that was a 10, 10 round fight and it went the diff- distance. But like, no offense to Femke, but she she just got like hit from pillar to post for, for every two minutes of every round and then mm. had a minute and she recovered just enough to get through another two minutes. Yeah. Whereas if it had been a three-minute round, those would have been stopped, would have been stopped in yeah. like the fourth round or whatever, yeah. and the fighter would have taken a lot less punishment, yeah. and would be good and good for fighting another day, and you know that all that side of thing. But if you if it's only two minutes, then it, they can last for ten rounds. Yeah, just last. Anna, well, that's a, another reason why they have them three minutes, so that there's you know, in two minutes, there's not enough time to stop a person on some occasions where on no. three minutes, there would be enough time to stop a person. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of the time, a lot of my opponents have been saved by the bell. Like, yeah. you know, I, I literally just needed yeah. 10 seconds more. More. And that was my fight, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And I suppose, like you say, you know, by, by, by that happening, they're kind of coming out for another round when maybe they didn't need to. So they're getting another team that's in the beating, you know, yeah. Yeah. The head, body, wherever. So yeah. they are getting a sustained beating. Whereas if it had been that three minute round, like you said, it would have been stopped. Yeah. Really, yeah. You know, they live to fight another day, you know, and, Absolutely. and, that, and you get the victory you know, the way you want it. So, but brilliant. Well, I guess we've take, kind of taken up enough of your time. It's been absolutely, um, oh, my phone's going. That's everyone's running out of It's been an absolute yeah. pleasure to chat to you. And I have got absolute a- pleasure. Um, because we're new to Zooming, I probably missed about the first 10 seconds of the recording. So you did. I I'm thought the recording say, not there. I'm add back in here and now that you are the Wolverine because you haven't got a mark on your face. <laughs> my my rubbishy uh, Zoom recording totally skills, but it's been totally brilliant. Totally agree. And, um, and thank you very much for joining us. And um, it's been wonderful to hear your views and about your career and your music and everything. And all we Fantastic. can do... Is wish and like I say, totally relieved that you're going to carry on fighting. So we look forward to seeing you at the new weight. Absolutely. I believe, I believe we've got your coach on for an interview next week, so we'll be chatting to him as well. Oh um, yeah, Noel's no, great, and yeah. uh, you, I'm sure he'll have lots of fun things to say about me as well. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm sure he's, he's not sick of me just yet. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for having me on, and it was great to chat to you guys. And yeah, hope it goes well.
Thank you. And we, you know, we are going to be commentating at our fights. So we'll be in touch. Oh, absolutely. I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Brilliant. And thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure. Cheers, guys. Thanks very much. Thank bye. you. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.